In our last session, we covered the theme of moral purity. It's the only subject, by the way, that Solomon spent nearly three chapters talking about. Well, now I want to go back to chapter 6, where Solomon also provides uh, some more wisdom warnings. And the first warning is about a matter of finances. A godly person isn't going to be stingy toward others. But he's got to be careful at the same time. And Solomon cautions us here in verse 1 about putting up security for your neighbor and giving your pledge for a stranger. Now, to put up security means that you're becoming equally responsible for someone else's debts, such as uh, co-signing on a loan. And Solomon warns against doing that for a stranger, for someone you really don't know that well. In fact, you need to be careful about doing that for a family member. You better consider whether or not you can handle that loan, that debt, because you just might have to. Now, I want to skip down here in chapter 6 for a moment to verse 16, where Solomon tells us that there are six things that the Lord hates seven that are an abomination to him. Now, an abomination is something that is morally repulsive to the Lord. By the way, this Hebrew expression, six things, no, or yea, seven, that, that's a way of indicating that that list is really not exhaustive. The Bible makes it clear that uh, all sin is equally repulsive to God. All sin is sinful, But he's going to talk about just a few here. This is actually, I think, encouraging because Solomon could have written, there are 6,000 things that the Lord hates. No, 7,000 that are an abomination to him. Well, that's true, but the Lord boils it down to just seven, as if to give us, you know, a starting point heading us in the right direction. Now, first on the list here in verse 17 is haughty eyes. And that indicates arrogance toward other people. Solomon adds here, a lying tongue and hands that shed innocent blood. Well, you don't really need any commentary to understand lying and murder uh, would be repulsive to the Lord. Verse 18 adds to the list, a heart that devises wicked plans. This describes uh, people who are always conniving and scheming and scamming others. Also here in the list are feet that make haste to run to evil. This pictures for us people who love to sin. Uh, They're looking for ways to sin. They're running after they, they live to sin. Finally, here in verse 19, the Lord hates a false witness who breathes out lies and one who sows discord among brothers. So God hates deceit and God hates those who create division among the people of God. Now, with the time we have left today, I want to move back a few verses to a subject we're going to run into several times in the book of Proverbs, and that's the subject of the sluggard. That's a person who works hard at getting out of work. And Solomon's going to refer to the sluggard numerous times in his collection, and one thing he points out is is the sluggard's lack of of a work ethic. He is undependable. Over in chapter 10 and and verse 26, we read this, Like smoke to the eyes, so is the sluggard to those who send him. So a sluggard is going to make you cry like you have smoke in your eyes because you just can't depend on him. Uh, Secondly, uh, Solomon points out that a sluggard's excuses are unbelievable. Over in chapter 22 and verse 13, we read, The sluggard says, there is a lion outside. I shall be killed in the streets. (laughs) He's claiming he can't go to work because there's a lion out there somewhere that might attack him. Well, this goes way beyond just calling in sick, but it's the same idea. In fact, I heard of one employee who called his boss to ask off to attend his grandmother's funeral. He was allowed. Six months later, he called in again, and it seems his grandmother had 
well, died all over again. He'd forgotten he'd used that excuse before, and he even used the same grandmother's name. (laughs) Well, one author said, the sluggard summons all of his creative energy into making excuses rather than making a living. Well, here's a third observation. The heart of a sluggard is unteachable. Now over in chapter 26, we read here in verse 16, the sluggard is wiser in his own eyes than seven men who can answer sensibly. In other words, you challenge lazy people and they'll give you a list of reasons why you're wrong. You just ask them. And they'll tell you why they're your best employees. They're the only ones who work so hard. Why you couldn't do without them. The truth is, they can talk, but they just don't work. Well, now Solomon writes back here in chapter 6, directly to the sluggard. He says here in verse 6, Go to the ant, O sluggard, consider her ways and be wise. So here's the solution. Well, let's take a field trip and go over to an ant hill, and let's just watch them for a while. Let's study the ants and grow wise. They are fascinating creatures. I have read they can lift up to 50 times their weight, which would be like you or me going outside today and picking up our automobile. A single ant colony will house millions of ants, and they're all busy at work guarding the colony Uh, serving the queen ant or hunting, uh, gathering food. And here's the amazing thing. All of this is implanted in their instincts by their creator. In fact, Solomon writes here in verse 7 that they do all of this without having any chief officer or ruler. They do it all without a chief. The Hebrew can be translated judge. In other words, they don't need a judge to settle a dispute or you know, some labor issue. The ants just move around and over each other and stay at the task. Imagine an ant hill with a million ants and not one traffic signal. They do everything without a chief, Solomon adds here, and they do it without an officer. This Hebrew word uh, refers to someone who literally writes something down, someone who assigns orders to others. You can imagine an ant out there with a clipboard handing out assignments every morning. Well, there isn't one of those. Solomon also adds that the ants work together without a ruler. He's saying the ants don't need someone to correct their job performance. They don't need somebody to praise them for a job well done. Ants are internally motivated to obey the instincts given to them by their creator God. So you could put it this way. They don't need anybody to make them work, to manage their work, or to motivate them to work. No wonder Solomon writes here in verse 6, Go to the ant, O sluggard, consider her ways and be wise. Without having any chief, officer, or ruler, she prepares her bread in summer and gathers her food in harvest. I got to tell you, ants just seem to love doing what their creator gifted, uh, designed them to do, and we ought to all be more like them. I've read about those who serve in the military. They're called riggers. Their job is to fold and pack parachutes other soldiers will use as they jump from airplanes. Part of their creed says this, there can be no compromise with perfection. I will be sure always. And, well, that's because they know they have a life or death job to perform. Can you imagine being told, hey, look, you're going to jump out of an airplane this afternoon, and your parachute was packed by that, you know, that sluggard over there. He came to work late, didn't seem to care about, you know, the work he was doing. But we think he folded the parachute correctly. So, so here, use the parachute he prepared Oh, I I doubt you'd be willing to jump out of a car with his parachute on your back. Beloved, if God cares about the work an ant performs, he certainly cares about your work and mine. So here's the prescription. Become even more diligent today as that dedicated teacher who prepares your lessons well, or that, 
that plumber who gets all the pipes connected properly or that mechanic who charges only what's needed or, or, or that doctor who takes some time to listen to their patient or maybe, maybe a cook who serves only your best or a salesman that only writes honest deals or maybe a student today who's willing to tackle each uh, assignment. Listen, don't forget we are ultimately working for the reputation of our Savior and the impact of his gospel out there in our world as people watch us work. Are we working with diligence and excellence like an ant? Well, with that, we're out of time for today. Until our next wisdom journey, beloved, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.